Are you recording? Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to our One World Energy Encounter with the Zohar. This week's portion is the portion of the Shalach. And um, okay. And um, let's begin by inviting in the Kabbalistic lineage of the Rav and Karen and Mikhail, Rabbi Shlag, Rabbi Brandwein, the Uriah Kodesh, the Ramchal, Rabbi Tafon, Rabbi Mazulai, Rabbi Nachman, Mendel, Rabbi Tepsk, Rabbi Kolonimus, Shapiro Piasetzna, the Baal Shem Tov, Rabbi Shimon Boy Chai and all of his students, Rabbi Mordechai of Chernobyl, Rabbi David of Kal Kalamai, a student of the Baal Shem Tov, one soul with Yosef at Sadiq and Shechem. We invite them in to get their assistance and guidance on our study. And um, this is our one world session. So it is one world. And so for, from wherever we are, we want to spread the light of the Zohar um, to the whole world and also share with the world as we access the upper realm and manifest the energy of Abad Chinam, unconditional love, treating everyone with humanity, ending the war in Israel, the safe return of all the hostages energy of healing for all those who need healing, energy of elevation for those souls that are transitioning, and um, also the energy of protection, removal of lie and evil speech, and removal of negativity from our world. Okay, let's go to verse um, 207. Hey, I so, have a question. Yes. Well, I'll wait. I'll wait. Two oh seven. You can ask your question. Does someone want to want to volunteer today? It's I I you know I'm sorry I had a brain freeze. It's about babka. I'll ask later. Not vodka. Okay, save that one. <laughs> Andrew, do you want to read English first today? Okay, great. So this is a big week. It's the splitting of the Red Sea. And, um, you know, we have this opportunity. It's also, the Spring of the Red Sea, also this past week was the full moon of, uh, of the month of Aquarius, of Shvat, another Shvat. And um, so, you know, Aquarians and the month, it's like, you know, it's like above structure. <laughs> and, in the same context, we have this opportunity to see endless possibilities in the world, to understand that everything is possible, like nothing's impossible. And in that in that context, we have the splitting of, of the Red Sea. So we want to think about all the places in our life and also the places in the world, but all the places in our life where we are looking for a breakthrough, where we need some kind of opening. And I know what you're thinking, you know, it's, it can't, it's not going to happen, but like, perhaps that's what we would have been thinking when we were standing on the shores of the Red Sea being attacked by the Egyptian army and the, the sea did split. And so the opportunity we had is to raise our consciousness, to look beyond what we know our nature to be, and, um, and be open to all possibilities. Ron, did it work or did it not work? Um, it worked. Hold on just a sec. Um, There's some funky screens going on. You see that? OK, good. Yeah, that is that we should. Okay. Is it not letting us share? Do you, do you see the Zohar online? I do. Yes. That. So yeah, go, to, go to Article 16. Article what? Scroll 16. Then sang then Moses? Then sang Moses. Okay. That's where we're going to be. Okay, great. Okay, great. Awesome. So um, let's dive in. 207. As you share Moshe, Rabbi Yehuda Batach, the Terem, Atzerachah, Babetan, Yedaticha, Begomer, 
Shifta the Levi Bechavan the Hava Levi Dule, Natal Le Kuchabrihu, Vater Le Bechame Trin, Mashach Le Kimishach, Rebut Kadisha Dileila, Machudina Pik Bibinoi, Rucha Kadisha de Alma, Zariz Le Behemenu, Behem Noye, Kadisha, Behemenuta Rabba. Then sang 207. Then sang Moses, Shemot 15 okay. 1. So wait, before we go any further, so this is uh, then saying Moses, this is Az Yashir Moshe. This is a prayer that we say every day before we get to Yishtabach, before we get to the uh, the Shema. And it's like, as we're, we're, we're getting, we're getting more and more elevated as the morning service goes on. And so it is a really significant uh section of this week's reading and significant enough that it's part of our daily prayers. So what's the significance of Moses and then Moses saying? Well, on, on one level, we're dealing with the splitting of the Red Sea and we're dealing with this amazing assistance that the Creator has given us. And these are things that we've studied about before. And as we approach the Passover holiday, a lot of these important revelations, important studies that, that we do so that when Passover comes, we're in the best position possible to connect to the opportunity that's there. But this again is about Moses, so continue. Rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion saying, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. Blessed is the portion Israel that the Holy One blessed be he desired more desired them more than all the other nations and okay for so so i'm gonna cut you off so so what what the zohar is pointing out by bringing down this verse from the prophet yermia so it's what does it mean before i formed you in the belly i knew you so this speaks to the level of connection that Moses and the Creator have. And so much so that it that just underscores the connection that the children of Israel have with the Creator. Now, I know it looks like the Creator's playing favorites when the Zohar says, desire them all than all than, than all the other nations. That's what it sounds like. But the deeper reality is that this is this what is what's desire? Desire is is the size of our vessel. We are also measured by our desire. And what our teachers explained about the children of Israel was and is, is that what distinguishes the children of Israel from all other nations is the size of our vessel, the amount of desire that we have. Desire for what? Desire to receive for the sake of share. Desire to make the world a better place. Desire to finish the perfection of the world. And so when it says that the creator desired us, it's just that our, our, our by, by design, we have this larger desire to receive. And our goal is, to transform that desire to receive into the desire to receive for the sake of sharing. The creator is the ultimate being of sharing. The creator doesn't need anything. It's we who have lack, who have needs, who have desire. But in order for us to, we're, we're, what our soul's purpose is, is to use that desire to manifest more blessings in the world and to remove our blockages to do that. And that's why we're here. And that's what this is really going to. 
Like who ends up on this path? I mean, it's people who are committed to trying to make the world a better place. And that's not to say that there aren't other places in the world where they're trying to make the world a better place. They are. But this is this is a unique path where we are aligned with the creator and using our desires to receive in a way that benefits the whole world, that benefits mankind. Okay, let's continue. He, he, okay, and for the and for the great love that he had for them, he set them yeah, up. Not, it's, not like, it's not like he loves us more. It's that, what is love? Love is just a more intense feeling than like. And when we say people are like each other, or I like somebody, it's that we share something in common. We like people that we have things in common. with. Love is just a more intense form. And so really what that's saying is that <clears throat> is we approach a similarity of form to the creator. How? Through sharing the attribute of sharing that the creator has. Remember, the, is the creator sharing all the time? Yeah, the creator is sharing all the time. Why don't we experience that? Why do we experience lack if the creator is sharing all the time? If the creator just wants to fulfill our needs, why aren't they just fulfilled? Because, because we want, yeah, you know, please, Andrea. Yeah, no, because we have we have lack. We have the clipo. We have things that block the what's coming in, but we have to remove that by, you know, going through stuff and learning and breaking habits and breaking things and to learn to, you know, be like more and more and more like the creator. Right. I mean, we are, we're on this path. We're our, we're, we've learned a lot, but there's always more, right? There's always, we still have things that we've got to really work, break through. If we're here, there's more work to do. I was I was doing a workshop, a capitalist workshop this week, and one of the students asked, "What? Where did those clipo, those shells, those blockages? Where did they come from? How did they get there?" So it's it's because of us. We create those blockages. We show up with fear. When we show up with envy when we show up as a trying to please people when we, when we fail to recognize what it is that what our gifts are and what we're here to share with the world we create those blockages okay let's continue he set them up he set up for them a true prophet and a faithful shepherd and aroused over him a holy spirit more than the other faithful prophets. He took him okay, out of so, his own portion. So what 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 in, in 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 attempting to assist the world in its tikkun, in its correction, there's a people that are there that are uniquely positioned. That's the children of Israel to assist with that process. And in order to assist us with that process, he he sent Moses to the world. That's what it means in the opening sentence. He, he knew him before he was born. <laughs> because he selected Moses to send Moses down to be the redeemer. And so that's part of this relationship that we have with the creator. So like if we're on this path, that is the nature of the relationship that we have with the creator. It's not just about the situation you were born into. It's by design. Moses was born into that situation by design. It's not like one day he decided, I want to redeem my people. He was born for that role. So ultimately, he discovers his soul's purpose. His soul's purpose happens to be a very high purpose. But what we get the benefit of in this context is an understanding of our soul's purpose. When we talk about Moses being born and finding his soul's purpose, it's an opportunity for us to more closely connect with our soul's purpose. And that's where we're getting, that's where we're getting right here. Let's continue. Meaning from what Jacob and 
had separated as a tithe of his sons to the Holy One, blessed be he, namely the tribe Levi. Since Levi... Okay, so so what, what the Zohar is telling us is that the tribe of Levi represented a tithing of Jacob. What does that mean? Because of, of, all, of all the tribes, the tribe of Levi was dedicated to taking care of the tabernacle and taking care of the temple. They didn't have the opportunity to go and own land or do the, have their own businesses. They were responsible. Their soul's purpose was taking care of the tabernacle and the holy temple. So in a sense, they were a tithing, something that was given to the creator to do very specific work needed for the creator to manifest aspects of the creator's energy in our world. They represent a tithing. So what does the creator do? Moses is born into the tribe of Levi. So he's, re he's taking Moses from his tithe and putting him into a whole different role. And that's what the Zohar means by like, he took him out of his own portion. So Moses is a, is a very elevated, significant soul on many counts. But this paragraph is going to the seed level of where Moses' soul came from, what Moses' soul relationship with the creator was before he was even born, and what, what his soul's purpose was, and how he found that soul's purpose. So it's an incredibly strong connection to Moses. One of the other things that our teachers have told us is that Moses returns in every generation. Now, we don't merit to know who that is. But that faithful shepherd, the Kabbalistic name, nickname for Moses, is always there and always available. And so we're, we're connecting to that now also. You know, there were many prophets, but we also know that no prophet rose to the level of Moses. Okay, keep going. Since Levi was his, the Holy One, blessed be he, received him and adorned him with many crowns and anointed him with the holy anointing oil of above. And then he produced from his children a holy spirit into the world and girded him with his holy girdles of the great faith, which is Bina. Okay, we don't often read about holy girdles, but what, in this context, this is about strengthening Moses with the creator's energy and so and we see this in Moses we see throughout the whole you know redemption from Egypt what Moses did and how he showed up and how he confronted all these difficult situations and managed them and spoke directly with the creator he was as they also say half man half angel so his soul was a very elevated soul Let's continue. So like for us, though, this is about A, connecting to the soul of Moses. This is also connecting to getting the guidance that the children of Israel get from these elevated souls. And so for us, it's an opportunity to get the guidance and also to connect to our soul's purpose, much in the way that Moses did. Can I ask a quick question before you start? Um, what is the difference between a Levi and a Kohen? Great question. So there were 12 tribes. Mm -hmm. 10 of them are lost. They're known as the 10 lost tribes. And if you go through the books of Tanakh, the books of, uh, of the prophets and, uh, and the following writings, the, the story is laid out there how the tribes kind of went off the path and disappeared. Now, we're taught that they're still around, but we just don't know where they are. Those members of those tribes probably don't know who they are. We may be encountering them all the time. I, I don't know. The two tribes that survived are the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Levi. When the tabernacle was dedicated, and this goes into the story of the prophet Moses, when the tabernacle was dedicated, 
Aaron was given the job of high priest. Mm -hmm. So all priests today, all Kohens, come from Aaron. Okay. And from Aaron, they also come through Pinchas. All priests. And there's actually a genetic test that you can take to determine if you're really a Kohen or not. There's a, there's a genetic marker. And people who are confused about whether or not they're Kohens or not, take that test. But didn't, didn't they have similar duties as the Levite, Levite, Levi? Like they didn't? No, no they didn't. The Levites were responsible for kind of like general work around the temple oh, and the okay. tabernacle. The priests were specifically responsible for much more elevated tasks, <clears throat> specifically the the um, the sacrifices. Okay. They did the sacrifices and other things. You know, on 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 Yom Kippur, you know, when the Psalm days in the calendar, mm -hmm. the high priest goes into the holy of holies, which is I think the only day of the year they go in. And so there was much more specific now, but they are part of the tribe of Levi. Okay. <clears throat> Got it. So really, really two tribes, Levi and, Ju and Judah, mm -hmm. and and the, the priests really are of the tribe of, of Levi. Okay. The coins. Um, so the difference is the same but different. Got it. Yeah. Okay. It's a great question. 208. <laughs> We learned that at the moment, the time had come for Moses, the faithful prophet, to descend to the world. The Holy okay, One. So at that moment, at that specific moment, when Moses' soul is coming to the physical world, stuff happened. So we're literally at the sea level of the soul of Moses. Hmm. What happened? The Holy One, blessed be He, uh, withdrew a Holy Spirit from the from the hewn. Is that how you say it? a block of the precious stone, sapphire, which is Malhut that was concealed within 248 lights and shone on him and he crowned so, with him. So we yeah. have this analogy that within each of us is a spark of the creator. It's a precious stone from the mountain that is the creator within each of us. So, initially, so the first thing I wanna point out is that this helps us strengthen our connection to our own spark. Moses' spark was a little bit different because it came from some, well, the Zohar is calling it a sapphire stone. So again, his soul was a very precious part of the creator. Not that ours isn't. <laughs> ours is too. And so we're connecting to that. We're also connecting to Moses at the sea level of his of his soul. And what do you make of those 248 lights? Does it remind you of anything? Yes. <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah, like... so like, <laughs> so part of what we've learned is that there are 613 commands. 248 positive, 365 negative. The positive ones are the things that we do to channel positivity into the world. And so you see that stone, which was concealed with 248 lights and shown on it. It was part of Moses' spiritual makeup. 
and and then we read he placed 365 crowns on him. So we see that both the positive commandments and the negative commandments like are part of the design of Moses himself. And no accident, he leads us out of Egypt, he redeems us from Egypt. This week's take this week takes us through the splitting of the Red Sea and then takes us to Mount Sinai for the revelation of the Torah and the Ten Commandments. Within the Torah are those 248 positive commandments and 365 negative commandments. Again, the positive things we do bring positivity into our lives. The, the 365 that we refrain from, the negative ones, are things we avoid to avoid bringing negativity into our lives. So this is what was revealed at Mount Sinai. So of course, Moses was uniquely designed for that role. And so that was Moses. So, but again, like our souls, our soul's purpose, we're uniquely designed to also reveal the light, to also manifest our gifts. And so we get strengthened in our ability to connect with our gifts and the light that we're, we're here to reveal to the world. You know, I was listening to a little snippet that David Guillaume uh, gave some insights into prayer. And he's like, you know, if, I don't know what example it was, but let's say it was an apple. So before you eat the apple, we Kabbalistically, we have a prayer we say, which is giving us the ability to connect to the holiness within that apple. And if we don't say the prayer, we don't say, and we don't uh, connect to that holiness, then there's less holiness that's revealed for the world. So everything we do is an opportunity to reveal light in the world. But there are prescribed methods for doing that. And so the reason why we do it is not because we're just supposed to. The reason we do it is because we, we want to manifest that important, positive, holy energy into the world. As a side note, uh, David Guillaume also shared that one of the reasons why we want to refrain from negative speech, like we don't want to, like to, you know, to the degree we are complaining about our lives, it's kind of negative. It's like we're rejecting the hand that we've been dealt, which is there to assist us in revealing light. So when we speak in a negative way about our experiences, negativity attaches to our tongue. Literally, when we say something negative, we are attaching negativity to our tongues. And then we move on and we say something positive or say whatever, that negativity is still there. So if, like, if we're wondering sometimes when we say something simple and it kind of gets out of whack, it's because we thought we were saying something that was, you know, neutral, but because of the negativity that we have connected to, it actually comes across as negative and people react to it in that way. So again, a really great opportunity for us to create greater consciousness, not only about the positive commandments and negative commandments, but also this, this restriction from negative speech and the implications that that has for ourselves and the world around us. Okay, keep going. And he crowned with him and he crowned him with 365 crowns and they stood before him and he appointed him all over, over all that was his. He gave. Was his. So, so Moses gets the job of being in charge of everything. That's the creator in this physical world. No yeah. pressure. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Um, uh, remember when, remember when, Mo, when, when Moses escapes Egypt and he goes and he's, you know, he's a, you know, he's working uh, the flock. He's shepherding the flock of his father-in-law. Um, he, one day he sees that burning bush. And he goes and he sees the bush. And the creator's like, listen, uh, I need you to go back to Egypt and redeem the people. And he's like, whoa. <laughs> he, he doesn't want to do it. What is that? Here we are, we're reading about how elevated Moses' soul was. 
you know, the, the, this, the, one of the stories that our teachers have told us is, at least I've heard, I don't know what the story is, like when Moses was born, like he had, he shined so much, he lit up the room. And yet he, he's having a conversation with the creator and the creator's like, I, got, I need you to go redeem the people. And he's like, he doesn't want to do it. It reminds me of when Mordechai goes to Esther in the Purim story and says, you need to talk to the king. You're the queen. You need to talk to the king because it's a death sentence for the, the people of Israel living under the king's, you know, authority. And she's like, I don't, I don't think that's my job. <laughs> And it's like, look, it is your job. Why do you think you're a queen? He's, and he said, Mordecai says, listen, you don't have to do it, but someone will if you don't. And remember, she fasts for three days and then she goes talk to the king. And that becomes the inflection point for the whole story. That is the inflection point. And what's the inflection point? It, meaning it was like going downhill for the people of Israel living in ancient Persia. And then she goes and talks to the king. That's it. That wasn't easy to do. Obviously, she fasted for three days. He could have killed her. He had just taken, taken out the previous queen for a much lesser offense. <laughs> Arguably. He asked her to come to Vashti, the, the previous queen. He asked her to come down to the party and she just didn't feel like it. You're out. <laughs> Yeah. That's just ask is much more significant. Um, Ron, I see your hands up. Oh, good. I thought you weren't. So I just wanted to make a comment about that. Like when you said, like, why? What was that about Moses not wanting to do it? Yeah. I think that's what you said, and 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 Esther not wanting to do it, and it's um, kind of like you know when we know we have to do something, like we have, like. And it's like we're waiting for somebody else, right? Like to <laughs> like do it for us or come and rescue us. But it's like, okay, there's no one coming, right? Like it's you, you gotta do it. You have the power. <laughs> you either do it or you don't. <laughs> we I think we can all relate to that. Yes. So, you know, part of what we get here is listen. There's nothing, there's no challenge that comes our way that we can't handle. We think we can't. That's something else. What do you suppose is the voice that we hear that tells us we can't handle the challenge? It's the opponent. It's the other side. It's the Yetzir Hara. It's like, that's the opponent. Who's trying to keep us from revealing the light that needs to be revealed. So, and I don't know if any of our roles will rise to the level of Moses. <laughs> I don't know. But I'm just saying, in this context, we also connect to our internal ability to meet the challenges that come our way. But it's a consciousness. We, it's a, it's a consciousness. We, we have the skill set. We wouldn't be in this situation. We didn't have the skills to do it. We didn't have the spiritual impetus to do it and so connecting to this level of moses again is such a very strong opportunity for us to connect to our internal energy to our soul to our soul's purposes to the gifts that we were here to we are here to reveal to the world what was moses gifts many details right here ultimately he he he's the redeemer, and he and he confronts Pharaoh. Pharaoh he, was Pharaoh a real person? Yeah, he was king of Egypt, the most powerful person in the world at the time, the most negative. And yet Moses goes and he confronts him. And so again, for us, we need to confront our Pharaoh. And every time we do, we grow and we reveal more of our soul and we reveal more, more of our gifts. And hopefully Moses reveals the gifts of the children of Israel 
who are here to do the work that the angels were previously working on, which was to perfect the world. Okay. Um, I see Suzanne, your hand is up. Yeah, just real quick. Um, I can clearly see today, for example, like right before this call, um, very timely. Um, I was back and forth with somebody and they were getting angry about something and felt freely to share it with me, which, you know, I wasn't interested, quite honestly, as an empath, the blessing and the curse of the empath. But anyways, because we absorb, we don't so much absorb it, but it, it, what it did was it like attract like. So this anger, actually, I could feel the anger, but I, what I realized over time and right before this class is that I don't know, some deep-seated anger in me about who knows what started to come up and it started to dislodge, right, so beautifully. And so then it was like, oh, wow, I want to go deeper and deeper, even though it doesn't really feel very good, you know, and it has to kind of come through the throat area and da-da-da, you know, but it was, and it's still processing right now, right? And, you know, kind of have a low-grade headache and stuff like that from the pressure, but it's pretty cool, right? Like, it's so cool that... We're talking about something external, but it, I'm mean, seeing the whole thing, the whole process inside, which is like really awesome. Right. I mean, I guess the garbage is your gift, right? Like, well, it is. I don't even want to look. It is gar the garbage is your gift. But I don't even want to look at it like garbage. I want to look at it like <laughs> it's got opportunities. Th these are the blockages. These things are happening to us, but they're really happening for us to assist us in removing the blockages that we have. And they're blockages that we don't see. They're in our blind spot. I mean, when Moses says he doesn't want to go redeem the people, he's not realizing that, that what's in the way, it's in his blind spot, just like it is for us. And so it's a great, it's a great um, consciousness for us to connect to. And, uh, and and use that in the most positive way possible. You know, the, the issue is when those challenges when those challenges come up, we react, and so that shuts down our ability to see the opportunity. And that's why we the, that's the importance of pausing and not reacting, and just you know we don't have to reply immediately to every text message we get at a very simple level. I mean. You know, texting in our world is like, you know, there's a certain urgency and immediacy we attack, we attach to that. But we owe it to ourselves to pause and think about it before we reply. Because once you send that message, there's no taking it back. Actually, now you can edit it, but like, short of that, <laughs> there's really no taking it back. And so we want to be present to what we're feeling, ask ourselves why we're feeling it, and then reply in a more proactive way to anything from the challenges that go in our life to the simple text messages that we get. Okay, did we finish the English? I just goes? have a couple more sentences. Again. Every single crown ascended and illuminated in a, in a thousand worlds that illuminate and in the candles that were concealed in the treasures of the supernal holy king. Okay, so we're talking about th this, this um, revealing of all these, all these worlds, all these blessings, all these gifts, all this positivity that, that uh, Moses represents in his coming to the world. And then on his journey when he's here, because his journey isn't just revealing his gifts. His journey is helping the children of Israel to reveal their gifts. What does it mean that, you know, one of the things that the, the literal narrative says is that the children of Israel had a slave mentality when they came out of Egypt. Well, that makes sense. I mean, they were slaves, you know, so they come out, they're free, but, you know, they still have a slave mentality. What does it mean to have a slave mentality? It means that you don't see the possibilities. What is a slave? A slave is someone who has boundaries imposed upon them, who doesn't have freedom. They have boundaries. 
And so was it a physical enslavement? Yes. Was it, was it a spiritual enslavement? Absolutely. And so part of what the redemption represents and the splitting of the sea represents and all the, the plagues that we read about the last two weeks is this diminution and removal of the blockages that were there structurally in Egypt, which re represents these boundaries. And then our emancipation, our freedom is coming to a world without boundaries so that we can reveal our gifts. Moses facilitated all that. It's like he can't do it on his own. And as a matter of fact, at one point, the creator gets so upset with the children, he says, he says to Moses, I'm going to take them out of the picture and you and I will, will take care of, of, of fixing the world. And Moses is like, no, 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 no. He, 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 he calls the creator's bluff, I suppose. He says, no, that, then take me out of your book. And the, the portion that happens, literally Moses' name doesn't appear. So again, what we're connecting to is not only the journey of Moses' soul, and consequently for us, it's about us through Moses connecting to the journey of our soul, connecting to our gifts, much in the way he connected to his gifts, connecting to our soul's purpose, much in the way he connected to his soul's purpose. So that's on an individual level, but on a, on a global level, just as Moses freed the children of Israel, redeemed us, so too, we have this opportunity to do our global work. And so here we are studying the Zohar, praying for peace, in Israel, peace in the world, praying specifically for the release of all those hostages, hostages safely, praying for protection, energy protection for everybody who's in harm's way, all the innocents that are in harm's way, and and movement towards a world where Bila Mavla the, the, the it's the end of death, and we manifest fulfillment and immortality and healing for our whole world. So uh, with that, we'll wrap. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Love you all. Have a great Shabbat. shalom. Don't forget the importance tomorrow of connecting to uh, the reading of a shalach and uh, the splitting of the Red Sea and our opportunity to, to for our, our own both personal breakthroughs and global breakthroughs. Okay, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Thank you. Shabbat shalom. Thank you.